This video is about how to organize a fight night comeback tournament and this is for when you've got time to do qualifications and everyone wants to play qualifications and the way it works is that we do round robin so everybody in the group plays everybody in the group. Now for a lot of people they won't qualify at all so the qualification is like for them that's the main event because say if there's for example here in Bruno there was a uh, Vasek and uh, Luke and lots of people would love to play one-on-one -on -one combat against some of the top players like top 10 players in the world and that's their opportunity to do so because they might not be able to do it in open group combat or in, they might not qualify for the fight night themselves so it's really important to put the qualifications on so everybody can take part no matter what their level because it's always open and this uh, instructional video of how to organize a fight night combat uh, qualifications is for groups of people from anywhere from like six five six seven eight eight is always a good number to run a top to a knockout tournament because then you can get the quarterfinals semifinals finals all the way up until about 18 19 20 players you might think oh then we're going to split it into two groups but it actually turns out the organizational uh, overload that comes with playing with two groups and how they all do that that's time for another video I'll do that for another video once you get up above uh, 18 19 20 players but below that it's actually quicker just to have everyone play everyone else and then just take the top t eight or just take the top 12 it's way easier way less painful paperwork and again if you do have a bigger group than that I'm covering that in another video coming up in the future. So what you need to do first of all is have the papers in advance and uh, the papers will look a bit like this. You will need the um, fight night tournament uh, score sheet this is uh, a lot of good information. It's got lots of tie breaks and everything is laid out here perfectly. Okay, come back out. And the other one that you need is the qualification sheet as well. Now you can find these really easily. Go over to the website. It's fightnightcombat.com forward slash resources. And there's links right here right here on the page you can find it there and you can download you can download exactly what you need right here pdfs so print out enough of each for the uh, for the tournament sheet print out you just need one of these but print out two or three in case you need some spares and then um, print out lots of these just print out 50 or 40 because if you don't use them at this tournament they're good for any amount of tournaments anytime you have them in the future just print them out ready to go and if you don't want to use them you can always recycle them just use the back for something else at the convention so what you do is when you get all together the whole group together everybody who wants to take part in fight night combat um, when they arrive you should uh, you should give them each uh, a piece of paper and if you have enough pens to go around give everyone a pen and make sure everybody writes their name down uh, it says right here name and nationality nationality is handy for me as records keeping for because when these names are listed on the website it's really handy for me to have the nationalities there as well and um, but it's very important when they say the name they put their full name not just their nickname not just their first name because if someone's like Mike it's like how many people called Mike uh, to in the fight night combat or how many people called Mike are right there so get them to put down the full name and their nationality so when you send me the results at the end of the tournament once everything is finished I have all of the uh, all of the the names and the full names so I can find them in the fight night database when I'm adding their scores which is very important for people's rankings and to have a record of what uh, they've uh, what, how they've taken part and of course go around and give everybody a number okay because everyone's in the same group start at number one and they'll do this this one, not one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to just use some examples here of some previous tournaments um, of, uh, of of smaller tournaments. So let's just say there's 12 people taking part in in the fight night. So I'm going to just fill this out as it should be. I'm going to type down, uh, write down Luke Burridge. And I'm going to be number, let's say I'm number three. What you actually need to do is tell everybody to cross out number three because they're not going to play themselves. And this is a really great, a great way to avoid a lot of confusion. So I'm just going to put a line through there. And so I'm going to have to play against 11 other people, okay? Because I'm number three, I don't play myself, which means I'm going to do 11 matches. So what you need to do is uh, instruct everybody to do this. Oh, I just remembered actually, I just said name and nationality. So I'm gonna put down British there as well because today I'm feeling British rather than, rather than German. All right, so there we go. So what you need to do is make sure that anybody who wants to take part has a piece of paper in their hand 
has written their name down and written a number at the top. That's really important. If somebody wants to take part and they don't have a bit of paper, say, do anyone here want to take part who doesn't already have a bit of paper? Put your hand up, give them a bit of paper, get them to write their name down at the top. Okay, so then you have to say the spiel like this. You've got to actually tell people what to do. You're going to say everybody is going to play everybody else in the group. There's 12 of you, so each everybody is going to do 11 matches. All of these 11 matches are going to be to three points. If you get three points, you win. And you've got to keep score between the two of you. Um, tell the players that they just need to pick up the three clubs, go into a space, and start their match. Okay, there's not going to be any referee, no umpire, or anything like that. It's just between the two of them. They have to keep each other honest. If they collide with another two people playing combat among themselves, uh, just pick up, replay the point. Uh, tell people not to run away. Don't take up too much space. You're not, it's not about how, who can run away from the other person just stay in a small area play to three points and then come back and write down the score now it's very important that you tell everyone to when they write down if they've won or not they have to write down if they won or they lost actually they've got to write down both so say I'm number three and I played player number one I'll ask them what number are you and say I won so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write down that I won I got one win and in that match, I got zero loss losses. So it's very important, one win in zero losses. What people will want to do, they'll want to put ticks or crosses. And so someone will say, ah, oh, yeah, I beat number 25 and I lost. And then they'll have made a mistake. And then they're like, oh no, let's cross that out. And I'm gonna tick. And if people just start doing ticks and crosses or only do a cross to say that they've won, it gets really confusing with any error checking. If there's a one, it's very clear there's a one, it's a zero. So this is very handy later on when people have made mistakes, they can cross out numbers and make your numbers and I'm gonna have won this match um, three points to one okay so that means I got three points my opponent got one point now of course lots of people would have taken part in fight night combat tournaments before loads of people have done this uh, we've been have been using this system since about 2012 so we've got like nine years worth of using this system of people keeping track of wins losses your points and opponents points the great thing is with this if somebody does make a mistake say I wrote down a score but it doesn't work out did I win them or the other player also has a record of this same match they will have exactly the opposite they'll have uh, one loss zero wins your points one opponents points three although that will be actually on line three on their on their form not on line one because that will be crossed out for them so everybody plays all their stuff there's a few more things that you've got to tell people not to do first of all tell them not to take the piece of paper with them when they start doing the fight night because what will happen is people fold it up and they'll fold it up and then they'll put it like down their pants and then at the end and they'll bring it out and they'll unfold it unfold it start doing it and what happens is the bits of paper get really nasty, really sweaty, all creased up. No, tell people to when, they, when they're not playing, they're going to put their pieces of paper way over to the side of the hall, way over to the side of the space, and, uh, and also where people don't slip on it. So don't tell people not just like put it down in the middle, because pieces of paper on a gym floor, people will slip. So tell people to put the paper all the way over on a table, on a bench, on a chair, all the way out the side. And so then what happens is once they've played all of their 11 matches, so I would have played number 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and not myself, um, that means then it's time to count up the totals. And down at the bottom, I'm going to write the total. So for example, I'm going to say that I won 11 matches and I, uh, and I got... Uh, uh, zero wins and if I won 11 matches that means I must have got what that's 33 points I guess no, you just said you got zero wins oh that's no 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 I got 11 wins I got 11 wins thanks to you there. 11 wins zero losses and that means if I got 11 wins I've got 33 points and let's say people scored five points against me okay um, and that's pretty much what you want to do. Also, you've, it's really handy if people actually say what the points difference is, because that's going to be one of the tie breaks later on. Okay. okay. One question, why didn't you put those numbers into the boxes? Um, I, just so they're more visible for the camera, because if I write them in the boxes, they're actually just small. So it's just so they're visible for the camera. It's just easier to write them. There's more space to write them big down the All bottom. Right. There. Everybody okay. just put them in the boxes. In yeah, the okay. Box. And so that is that means I if you uh, minus the points that scored against me from the points that I scored, it's going to be, what's that, a plus 28. Okay, so I have a points difference of 
plus 28 and we use that for a tie break in, less, in case two people have got like say the same amount of points. All right then, that is it. That's the information. Once people have completed all of their 11 matches, you gather together all the pieces of paper and then we're going to order them. We're going to be ranking all of the players who have taken part in the fight night qualifications. Um, the cool thing about this system though is, and that's actually what happened here at the Bruno Juggling Convention. We were playing and there was like, actually I don't know how many people took part in this one was there. Okay, so there was only nine people taking part in the, or ten people taking part in the qualifications and then one guy, was it Yuffie? Yuffie? Is that the guy's name? I think there's a bit of a, yeah Yuffie. He suddenly turns up right at the end and is like, oh there's only ten of you playing, can I play? And of course he could step in because not everybody had finished their matches, everybody was still around, so we're like, all right, you've got to play everyone a lot quicker. So he actually stepped in as number 11, everybody played against him, and we managed to get him into the fight night tournament right there. But that's only really possible. It's only possible because he only turned up a little bit late. He yeah. turned up like halfway through qualifications, and we made it work. Okay, so what happens is once everybody has um, done all their matches, everybody has done it, everybody has counted up uh, all of their, you know, wins, losses, points for, points against, and points difference, we're going to put everybody in order. The great thing is, which, how to put them in order is right here. There's all these tie breaks here. Everybody plays and then we order them. And uh, so let's go through. Uh, it says this, the tie breaks, first of all, you just write, you put down wins versus losses. So 10 goes above 9, goes above 8, goes above 7, goes above 6. Oh, this is actually really good. Goes above 4, goes above 3, goes above 3. Ah, so which one's which one comes out above here? So both of these had 3 wins and 7 losses, and then you go over to the the this tie break here, which is points difference. Okay? And the points difference here minus 7. So uh, won 16 points and this person only won 12 points. This person had uh, 23 against, this person had 25 against. So this one is um, minus 7. Is that right? I don't even know. So either way, minus 7 beats minus 13, okay? Because minus 7 is higher than minus 13. And so you go all the way through, oh here's another, this is actually a three-way tie. Maybe this is why I got this out as well. And this is a this is a, a minus uh, 15 or which whichever way around it goes, okay. Maybe that's in the, currently in the wrong order, we managed to get the top eight. And that's what we're looking for, really. As soon as you got the top eight, you can start, or top 12, if there's more people in the tournament, say there's 18 people taking part in the tournament, uh, maybe 17, 18, 16, 17, 18, take the top 12, because that actually works really well here. And it even says right here, on this uh, score sheet, wh where you need to put the ple people. Can you can you see it? Yeah. Does it come up? It's it's printed. Well, seed, yeah. Seed. Yeah. So here it actually says. So if you're doing eight players in the tournament, you just use this section. If you're going to do twelve players, if, like there's eighteen people taking part in total, you can use the full amount there. It tells you which of the order you put in. Okay. But there's actually, even though it says here all of the different uh, tie breaks, let me bring out this really interesting example that happened um, a few years ago at Durham Juggling Convention and we actually took it to the extreme. The way that it worked here is that um, I was seeded first, I think, yeah, Brooke Roberts, no surprise, John Pete, you know, the top names that you're going to expect. And then we got down to um, Greg, who was it? At this point we were like, ah, right, so now we have Mike Armstrong, which we ran. Oh no, this is. Oh, these were the old. These were the old uh, form where it's actually the other way around. Okay, so this is an old form. It's just. It's exactly the same except the wins and losses were on the other side. Okay, so this was. He won two, lost seven. Uh, Greg won two and lost seven, and French won two, lost seven. And here, this is the points difference. It's confusing because it's the other way around, but don't worry. Minus fifteen points difference. Minus fifteen points difference. Minus fifteen points difference. Okay. And then you, so that where you go, oh, we're gonna to need to go to the third tie break, head to head between tied players. Okay, Mike is number 21, and he beat Greg Phillips. Greg Phillips beat French, and French beat Mike. So we actually had a circular tie break. It was very tricky. And actually says here as well, um, so then you have to go uh, head to head between tied players. That was actually circular. So we went to current 52 week rankings. We went to the website, 
who is highest in the current rankings. That's the next tiebreak. Turns out none of them had played a tournament in the last 52 weeks. None of them were ranked. And so we had to go to the next one, highest ever rank. Mike Armstrong had taken part in a fight night before. Greg and French had never taken, a fight night, taken part in a fight night before. That meant Mike had the highest ranking. So he was the top. He was the top player out of those three. And once you've done one tie break to break a three-way tie, it's actually quite easy because then you just go back with these two guys back up to the first tie break again, which is wins the same, points difference the same, and then you went to head-to-head -to -head between two players. Now we couldn't have the circular head-to-head -head where it all goes around. It turns out um, Greg beat uh, French, so Greg was ahead. And that was actually the difference because Greg was then seeded number eight, and he got into the tournament, into the knockout, and French didn't. Aww. So it's the, that's the way it works. So if there's ever a three-way tie, you find something which puts one person above the others, and then you go back to the, the, the top of the tie break list. So you, you work out what the tie is, we eliminated Mike, and then we went back to the first tie break again, and then went back down through the tie Break. That's how sporting regulations typically work. So what happens then is that you put the names, once you've done all this tie break stuff, you put the names here and then you play the fight night itself and you just go down these match one, match two, match three, match four, match five, match six, third place match, and fourth place match. Do all of them to five points. Don't think, oh, the final is more important. Let's do that to seven. No, if you keep it to five, everybody understands what's going on. There's no confusion. And, uh, and the, playing to five points makes these matches more important than the qualifications. And if you're pushed for time, don't think we'll do three point matches because most of the time wasted isn't playing the points and winning the points. It's the, the faffing around between the points and the faffing around between the matches. If you're ever wondering, well, do we have time for this? Yes, no. Get through these matches quickly, but still play them to five points. Most of the time, it's the host messing around, the players not being ready. It turns out if you've got like, uh, like this is what happened at Durham Juggling Convention and in Bruno, these were small fight nights just for 12 players, 12, 13 players, I think it was 11 at Bruno and 12 at, um, in, in, uh, in uh, Durham. Uh, you can do the whole thing in an hour. Get everyone together, do the qualifications, normally takes 30 minutes, uh, 35 minutes, and then to play these matches if you do it quickly, maybe another 30 minutes, 25 minutes to play all these matches if you move them along quickly. Uh, of course, if there's audience, if it's happening in the evening, you can spend more time, build it up into a big event, but all of this can be completed within an hour slot as long as there's only like 12, 12 people taking part and you just do uh, the top eight through to the qualifications. Um, I think that's everything to, that we need here, um, except I might as well just include this at the end. If you actually, all the information that I need as the person who's going to submit all of these things um, into the Fight Night database is exactly this, okay? So what you should do is, I mean, I didn't do this because I was organizing these conventions, so I didn't need to do this, but what, we sh what you can easily do is you have all the scores written here, if you put the full names along with the seats here, their country, uh, which is handy, and then their win and loss, um, that's all I count in the Fight Night database. I don't need the points for or points against or anything. It's just their wins and losses. So in this case, Vasek was, he'd be listed in number one seed and uh, that's it. And then take a photo of this. It actually says right here, uh, all done. Take a photo and email it to me. The email address is right there, luke at juggler.net. And also really important, take a photo of everyone to, who took part in the fight night and email that to me, luke at juggler.net. So really at the end of the fight night, this is all you need. Make sure that people don't throw away their papers at the end, collect them all together to make sure you can do any error checking and things like that. You'll need all of these. So tell people at the start, don't walk away, don't leave before uh, filling this in and handing it in. And also don't leave before we announce who's in the final. Cause sometimes people will do qualifications and then leave and you're like, where's Simon? He's meant to be playing now and he's, he qualified and he didn't think he qualified, but he did. So make sure everyone sticks through throughout the uh, fight night. Oh, and that is another thing. If somebody gets injured um, and doesn't want to take part anymore or otherwise doesn't take part, um, you can actually easily cross out their score on everybody's sheet. So if they've only played five people, don't let those matches against the person who drops out count for them. Okay, it's best just to wipe them from the entire tournament completely on everybody's sheets and then count up the totals without uh, the missing players' totals. Juliana, any questions at this point? Uh, no, I think 
I think that's basically what we always yeah. say to people when, when we run the fight night ourselves. Yeah. Juliana has organized just as many of these as I have, so uh, hopefully I've uh, got everything together there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Coming up soon will be another uh, how to organize a fight night combat. I'll do it, how to do it with a big uh, convention, so maybe 40, 50 people taking part, and you've got different group sizes, and how to organize that. That'll be another video. And also I'll do a video of how to actually run the fight night. So if you've got an audience, you've got the players, how to make it into a fun event in the evenings with scoreboards and announcers and music and all the kind of things that we've developed over the years at EJCs, British Juggling Conventions, Dutch Juggling Conventions, Berlin Conventions, like the big tournaments and how we make it into a fun event. That'll be another video. Uh, that's it from me. Thanks, Juliana, for filming. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.